What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to the next question, dealing with quadrilaterals. So we are given the quadrilateral that has vertices A, negative two and one, B, negative one and four, C, two and three, and then D, three and negative four. And we have to verify that this quadrilateral, A, B, C, D, is a kite. And then in part B, we have to verify that the diagonals are perpendicular. And then in part C, we have to verify that the point of intersection between the diagonals only bisects one of them. So before we get into the calculations, just a quick overview of how a kite works. So it's a quadrilateral that looks like this, takes the shape of a kite. And what's unique about it, you know what, let's use different letters here so we're not getting confused, just because with this A, B, C, D, we still don't know which of these vertices it's gonna be. So I'm gonna use different letters for this general description of a kite. And what's unique about it is that this side and this side are equal lengths, right? This side EF, so let's actually write that. EF is equal to EH and then FG is equal to GH, right? So these two sides that are attached here at this vertice are equal, and then these two sides which are attached at this vertice are equal as well, right? So it's a pretty unique type of quadrilateral. So that's how we can verify it. We can find all of the lengths of all four sides in part A, and then just make sure that the sides that are next to each other are equal in length. Now. There's a property in terms of the diagonals. So if we draw the diagonals here, notice that the first one would be this diagonal EG and then the other one would be FH like that. This is not to scale, but what happens with the diagonals in a kite is that first off they are perpendicular for any kite. So that's what we're going to verify in part B. And what's unique about a kite is that this point of intersection between the diagonals, which is what we're actually gonna to have to find in part C, only bisects one of the diagonals. So if you notice here, this diagonal here gets bisected, okay? It gets cut in half. So this length right here, which I symbolize with these three lines here, and then this length are equal, but then this length and this length are not going to be equal. Okay, so it's only bisecting one of the diagonals. So that's one of the properties of a kite, and we're gonna verify it with this specific one that we're gonna be dealing with. And in this case, what we're gonna to have to do is we're first gonna to have to find the point of intersection. So we're gonna to have to get an equation for the diagonals, find the point of intersection, and then verify that that point of intersection is gonna be the midpoint of only one of the diagonals that we're gonna work with. And what I'm actually gonna do with this one is actually draw it on a Cartesian plane because the coordinates are not too bad. They're not too high here. So we'll have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four like that. So we'll have A, which is at negative two and one. So that's gonna be over here. So that's gonna be A. Then we're gonna have B at negative one and four. That's gonna be up here. Then we're gonna have C at two and three, which would be like right there. And then we'll have D. So let's label these A, B, C. And then we'll have D at three and negative four, which would be like down over here. Okay, so if we connect all of these, notice that it is indeed taking the shape of a kite. Okay, so if you notice here, probably what's gonna happen, this is not to scale, but if you did draw it to scale, you would notice that probably this side AD over here and this side CD are gonna be the same length, and then AB and BC are gonna be the same length. Okay, but let's verify it. So let's first find the length 
of AB, so the length formula, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, and then all of that is square rooted. So with A, let's actually put the points here, so negative 2 and 1, let's label this x1, y1, and then B is negative 1 and 4, let's label this x2, y2. So we would have x2, which is negative 1, minus x1, which is negative 2. Be careful with the brackets there. That's going to be squared. Then we'll have y2, which is 4, minus y1, and then that's going to be squared. So this would end up being negative 1 plus 2, right? The two negatives turn into a positive. Then we'll have 4 minus 1, which is 3. That's going to be squared. So we'd end up with negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1, and then we'll have 3 squared which would give us the square root of 1 plus 9, which would give us root 10. Okay, so the side AB has a length of root 10, like that. Now let's find the length of the side BC. Right, so this side over here, hopefully we get the same thing. So we have B already labeled, so C let's label 2, 3. B is already labeled x2, y2, so we'll label C as x1, y1. So we'd have the square root of negative 1 minus x1, which is 2, plus y2, which is 4, minus y1, which is 3, like that. So we'd end up with negative 3 squared plus 1 squared. Notice that that would give us 9 plus 1 which would give us root 10. Again, so as expected, that there ends up being root 10 as well. All right, so both of these lengths here are equal. Let's move to the next one. So let's find the length of CD. Right, we'll find this length over here. And then D has a coordinate of three and negative four. We have X1, Y1 for C, so D will label X2, Y2. So we'd end up with x2, which is 3, minus x1, plus y2, which is negative 4, minus 3, which is y1, like that. And so what do we get here? We'd end up with 1 squared plus negative 7 squared, which would give us 1 plus 49, root 50. Okay, so CD has a length of um, root 50. And now finally, let's find the length of AD. Notice we have x1, y1, x2, y2 already nicely labeled. So the length of AD would be x2, which is 3, minus x1, which is negative 2. That's going to be squared, plus y2, which is negative 4, minus y1. That's going to be squared. So we'd end up with, over here, the two negatives turn into a positive. So we'd have 3 plus 2 squared plus negative 5 squared. Notice that's going to be 5 squared, which is going to be 25. And then notice that negative 5 squared is also 25. So we'd end up with root 50. So we do indeed end up with that same length right there. Okay, and that's enough right there to verify that you are dealing with a kite, right? So these two lengths that are attached at a vertice are equal. And then these two lengths, which are attached at the opposite vertice, are also equal. Okay, so we're done with part A. Now in part B, what we have to do is we have to verify that the diagonals are going to be perpendicular. So what we can do is we could find the slope of this diagonal over here, AC. Then we could find the slope of the diagonal BD. And hopefully those two slopes we get, they're going to be negative reciprocals of one another, which is going to prove that they're going to be perpendicular. So let's first find the slope of the diagonal AC right here. So let's label C as x2, y2. Right, we have A as x1, y1, and then C as x2, y2. Now remember the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we'd end up with... Uh, 3 minus 1 over 2 minus negative 2, right? Yeah, 
So this would end up being two over two plus two, which would be two over four, which would give us one over two. Okay, so the slope, let's actually write it on the side here because we're actually gonna have to use it as well for uh, part C when we find the point of intersection between these two lines. So the slope of AC is one over two. Now what's the slope of BD going to be? Well, we got B labeled X2, Y2, so let's label this D coordinate as X1, Y1. Again, it doesn't matter, you can label this as X1, Y1, this as X2, Y2, you're gonna end up getting the same slope in the end. So we'd have Y2, which is four, minus Y1, which is negative four, over, we'll have X2, which is negative one, minus X1, which is three, so this would be four plus four, Negative one minus three would give us negative four, so we'd have eight over negative four, which would give us negative two. So the slope of this diagonal here is negative two. And notice on the diagram, it makes sense as well. So notice this slope here is positive, and then this slope here, right, is negative. And notice that both slopes are indeed uh, negative reciprocals of one another, right? If we take one over two, flip it, change the sign, we end up with negative two, or if we take negative two or negative two over one, flip it, then we're going to get a positive, and then it's gonna be one over two as well. So finding these slopes here, and then notice they're negative reciprocals, we verified part B that both diagonals are perpendicular. So now in part C, what we got to do is we got to verify that the point of intersection between the diagonals is only going to bisect one of the diagonals. And notice it's probably going to bisect this AC, but we're still going to have to confirm that. But from the diagram, you can kind of tell. But we first have to find the point of intersection. So what we have to do is we have to find the equation of both diagonals. So let's start off with the equation for AC. Now notice that we have the slope of AC already, right? It's one over two, we found that. And so we could use either negative two and one or two and three to find the equation. Doesn't matter which one, you're gonna get the same equation. Let's just use two and three. So we'd have y equals one over two x plus b. So plug in three for y, we'll plug in two for x. Two times one half is one. So the b value would be two. When we bring the one over, three minus one is two. Okay, so the diagonal AC has an equation y equals one over two x plus two. Okay, now let's find the equation for the diagonal BD. Okay, so the equation for the diagonal BD, well, we have a slope of negative two that we already found, and then we could use either negative one and four or three negative four. I'll use negative one and four. It doesn't matter, you can use the other coordinate as well. You're gonna get the same equation. So we'll have y equals negative two x plus b. Let's plug in four for y, and then we'll plug in negative one for x. Negative two times negative one is positive two. So we'll have two is equal to b. Right, when we bring this over, four minus two is b. So the equation for bd is y equals negative two x plus two. And so now we just have to find the point of intersection between these two. And notice, if you look at the equation, we're gonna do the algebra, but if you look at the equation, notice that they have the same b value, right? They're in y equals mx plus b form. They have the same B value, which is the Y intercept. And if they have the same Y intercept, then that means that's where they intersect. And notice from the diagram, you could tell as well, it's not like right on zero and two, but it's around there. The reason why is because this is not fully to scale. But if you drew this on actual graph paper, you would see that it goes through zero and, uh, and two. So you could tell from the equations right there. But if we did the algebra, so what we could do, make them both equal. So we'll have y equals uh, one half x plus two, then we'll have negative two x plus two, like that. So what we could do, bring the two x over, and then bring the two over, so we'd have two minus two. So this here, one half plus two would give us five over two x, right, or 2.5. This here would be zero, divide both sides by five over two, 
zero divided by anything would just give us zero, right? So that x value is zero, as we could tell. And then if you want to get the corresponding y value, you could plug it into either this or this, doesn't matter. You're going to get that y value of two. After you plug in zero for x, this or that is going to go away. Okay, so zero and two is where the diagonals are intersecting like that. And now what we have to do, remember, we have to show that that point of intersection zero and two only bisects one of the diagonals. So what we can do is we could find the midpoint of AC, find the midpoint of BD, and only one of those midpoints should be that zero and two. If it was both midpoints, as we've seen in previous quadrilaterals, if both midpoints would be zero and two, it means the diagonals would, both diagonals would be bisected at that point. But remember with a kite, only one of them is gonna be bisected. So let's find the midpoint of AC. So notice how that's gonna be the obvious one where it's going to, um, first off the midpoint, let's write the formula. So in AC, it's obvious that it's going to be that point zero and two, but just for formality, for full marks, let's show all the work. So we'll have negative two plus two, that's gonna be over two, and then y1 is one plus three over two. So this would be zero over two, four over two, which would give us zero and two. Okay, so this point here, it definitely bisects the diagonal AC. So this length and this length are the same. You can find the lengths if you want, but it's not necessary. We're just showing, we're verifying that it bisects, right? And that point of intersection is the same as the midpoint of this line. So this and this are the same. Okay, but this is not enough. You can't just stop here. You also have to show the midpoint of BD doesn't equal zero and two because again we're only showing we have to verify that it only bisects one of the diagonals so we already have x2 y2 x1 y1 so we'll have x1 which is three plus x2 which is negative one that's going to be divided by two and then we'll have y1 which is negative four plus y2 which is positive four Notice we'd end up with three plus negative one, which is like three minus one, that's two. That's gonna be over two. Negative four plus four is zero. That's gonna be over two. So we'd end up with one and zero. Okay, so one and zero, it should be here. Again, this diagram is not to scale, but that's the midpoint right there of BD. So that's where BD gets cut in half. Notice it's not at that zero and two. Right, so with that work, we've done enough to show that the diagonals, the point of intersection between the diagonals, only bisects one of them, and more specifically, in this case, it's the diagonal AC.